So the Quran has left no loopholes and the Quran also has not given the chance to someone or for someone to say continue oppressing him because he will continue forgiving no problem. Do you know there is a story where there were three very pious people in the masjid and there was one youngster. So the youngster was told you know those people are very pious. The one in the left is still young. The one in the middle is more pious than him and the one in the right is extremely pious. So he said, how can I know the difference between he who is pious and he who is not pious? So the youngster was told, well, they concentrate. They concentrate a lot. So he said, all right, let me see. He went to the first one. Salaamu Alaikum. No response. He was involved. This man was involved in his dhikr and recitation of the Quran. No response. So this youngster decided to give him one clap on his face. So the poor pious person got one clap on his face. And as though nothing had happened, he continued reciting. Now the man says, yes, truly this, these people are pious and the sign of it is that they don't even notice what goes on around them. Let me go and see the one who's more pious than him. So he moved slightly to the right and he greeted again, no response. He gave this man one solid clap. The man got up and says, is your hand okay, brother? Is your hand okay, brother? So this man was shocked to say he is not conscious of what happened to him, but he is conscious of the pain that came on my hand. Allahu Akbar. Look at how pious he is. So now this is obviously teaching people how to forgive, isn't it? They didn't even discuss that it was a sin. So now this youngster is thinking to himself, whoa, that man on the right must be the most pious. Let's see what he does. He went, he greeted him again, no response. He gave him one solid clap. That man got up and gave the youngster two claps. <laughs> so the youngster says, but I thought you were the most pious. He says, someone somewhere needs to stop you clapping people. <laughs> so this is why we need to study in Islam. We need to look at what is the best remedy for that particular situation. Sometimes you can forgive people. But if you continue forgiving them, who's going to stop that oppression? This is why the hadith says that if you do not stop an oppressor from oppressing others, then Chaos will overtake the whole community and then you will make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he won't respond because you will be collectively guilty of having allowed an oppressor to keep on oppressing or keeping on oppressing the rest of the people. So it's important that we balance it as we have been taught. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant that to us.